It's so hard to believe it's been over five years since Red Dead Redemption 2 has been released. Throughout the development of Red Dead Redemption 2, there was many cut pieces, including cut maps, characters, missions, and more. This cut content has even left some mysteries unresolved in the Red Dead Redemption world. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about those mysteries and cut content. Welcome to the definitive Red Dead Redemption 2 cut content iceberg. I'm confident you'll learn something new about Red Dead Redemption 2 that you did not know before. It's part one in a series, so make sure to subscribe with your bell notifications on so you know when part two is released. This is the longest produced video I've ever made, so if you enjoy it and you want to see more videos like this, make sure to drop it a like. We're going to start at the most well-known info, then we're going to move into some deeper details, and then we're going to go into some theories. I've also included a couple non-cut content items that are just really interesting. Consider them a bonus and I hope you enjoy. Settle in and let's talk about the well-known info with Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's start by talking about the Blackwater Camp. As Red Dead Redemption 2 starts, the gang is running from the law north towards Coulter. Prior to that, the gang had a camp outside of Blackwater for some time. Arthur and Jose are working on one type of scam to make money, and Micah and Dutch were working on the ferry job, which Arthur was a little hesitant about because of the risk. If you look at this drawing from Arthur's journal of Blackwater and the location from where it's taken, it's likely that the gang's camp in Blackwater was right here. It would have been pretty neat if the prologue was set in Blackwater before the ferry heist. You know, if they re-released Red Dead Redemption 2 for next-gen consoles and added a Blackwater prologue, take all my money. The Curse of Valentine. You'll hear a number of residents say that the town is cursed. You can get some additional information from a traveler. Let's listen to him. The town of Valentine. I'm sure you know the place. People there are convinced they're under some curse. That the run of bad luck is punishment for something. Shared a fire out near there with an old fellow who told me he think it's the engines. Hell of a thing. Right? Stranger things have happened. He said he'd heard years ago about an ancient Indian painting. One of them they did on animal hides that showed a massacre by the settlers. And the rumor was, it was connected with Valentine in some way. He said the painting got torn up and thrown away, but he'd heard some pieces of it still exist. I don't know. We all tell ourselves things to explain what we can't explain. But what we do does come back on us, I reckon. Well, anyway, I should... He talks about how a native family was brutally killed with a treasure they found by settlers, and the curse in Valentine has something to do with that. He hears there's a painting that depicts all this on a hide that's scattered around in different pieces. If you look around for those pieces of map, you will not find them, but thanks to some talented people, they were able to piece together the cut content that was supposed to be the Valentine Curse mission. It looks like we would get four pieces of that high painting, as well as find a number of additional artifacts, perhaps that would lift the curse of Valentine. Herbert Moon made a deal with a strange man that doomed Armadillo in exchange for happiness for two generations. We know with the cholera outbreak in Armadillo, Herbert Moon is miraculously okay. As we can see at the strange man's shack in Lemoyne, a map of Armadillo, and a note that says, I offered you happiness for two generations, you made your choice. And if we kill Herbert Moon, we can see a letter from his daughter, Herbetta, I'm not joking, saying that she's having a child. Also in the strange man's cabin, there's writing on the wall that says the moon will shine on in the darkness. Now, do I think the strange man took a dump in the water supply and gave everyone cholera? Not at all. I do think that he presented Herbert Moon a moral choice in the same way he did John. Whatever reason, I think Herbert Moon is directly responsible for the cholera outbreak in Armadillo. Arthur Morgan was originally able to go to New Austin in one way, shape, or form. This is confirmed by voice lines in the files, as well as by Roger Clark in saying something around it in an interview. Currently, if you try to go to New Austin with Arthur, you'll be met with an invisible sniper that'll kill you from just about anywhere. Some of the funnest challenges you can do in Red Dead Redemption 2 right now is trying to get to New Austin as Arthur and complete the herbalist challenge. We know Sheriff Freeman has some unique lines for Arthur Morgan in Tumbleweed. 
From a story perspective, it would have made a lot of sense if Arthur went to New Austin, committed some major crime, and then, if he tried to go back, that's where the invisible sniper would come in. But for whatever reason, in the end product, Arthur Morgan cannot really go to New Austin. Over 2,000 people made the game. It cost in between $370 and $550 million to make when you combine development and marketing cost. It would make it one of the most expensive video games ever made. The final script for the main story was around 2,000 pages, although it would be about 8 feet high if all side missions and additional dialogue were included. Individual pedestrian actors had scripts of around 80 pages each, and the cats had to learn multiple types of meows. I'm just kidding about that one. Rockstar also completely overhauled its AI system for the first time in 17 years. Due to Red Dead Redemption 2 being the first game from Rockstar built specifically for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, this allowed for about 10 times the amount of animations over Grand Theft Auto V due to the additional memory of these consoles. And it really shows due to the different amount of animations that we see in Red Dead Redemption 2. The next one is Princess Isabeau Katharina Zinsmeister. She went missing 15 years before the events of Red Dead Redemption 2 from a remote hunting lodge while her family was on a vacation to the United States. Some think she was murdered, some think she was kidnapped or abducted. There's been no ransom note. Some people think she got eaten by wild animals. We can find a guy near Elijah Pool who's trying to find the missing princess. He tells us to go to the Van Horn trading post in search of clues. We go to Van Horn, we can find her poster, but inside the fence we can also find her luggage. We know that the princess has an adult model within the game file, so at one point we were going to be able to find her as an adult. What we do know from data miners is we would have turned the princess in at the sheriff station. Not as a bounty though, but as something else we don't know. Maybe her story changed from the original. Tempest Rim is a mysterious spot on the map that there's no way to get to without mods. It looks like originally, before there was a bunch of map changes, this may have been where your first camp was. If you go over there with mods, it's not very exciting, there's not much going on, there's some wildlife, and that's about it. It is kind of weird that they kept that non-accessible location on the map, though. It's just a good example of how much has changed during the development of Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's move on to some deeper details. One of the things that delayed development of Red Dead Redemption 2 were major changes to the map and camp systems. There was a point where the Hauser brothers were extremely disappointed at how the game was turning out. They didn't like the gameplay, didn't find it fun or interesting, and it triggered an overhaul on a lot of different things. We know the map changed a whole lot based on a few things. We got leaked maps prior to the release that everyone thought were fake but were actually pretty real. Things were in different places, like Ansburg were where Van Horn was, and vice versa. Cisco was further north, and we don't know if New Austin existed in this world. Saint Denis was called New Bordeaux, which actually caused some problems because Mafia 3 had a city called New Bordeaux, and Rockstar actually had to bring piles of people back in to re-record voice lines for Saint Denis versus New Bordeaux, as well as fix a whole bunch of the art within the game. Another thing that led to the delays were the black bars on the cutscenes. They had to reshoot a number of things and that takes time. The end result is simply amazing, however you can almost feel the little bit of rush at the end. Just think of John's hair. There was plans for some level of Mexico in Red Dead Redemption 2 at some point during development. Right now if you make it over there, there's only one building and it's El Perdicio. But within the files, there's bounties for Mexico, textures for buildings, and more. Heck, if you can get over there, you can even hear the ambient Mexico music. It's pretty clear that at some point early in development, Mexico was going to be a place in Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'm pretty sure as the scope of the project got so big, some things would have got cut and left behind, Mexico being one of them. A dream scenario would be to have Mexico added to Red Dead Online at some point. I know that's not going to happen, but hey, one can dream. Did you know there's one location with the same name across Red Dead Revolver, Red Dead Redemption 1, and Red Dead Redemption 2? And that location is Twin Rocks. Although Red Dead Revolver takes place in a different time and universe as the Redemption games, it's still pretty cool and interesting. Nice little Easter egg. Oh, and here's the sad last image that we ever see of Dutch in Red Dead Redemption 1. 
This is after he's shot by Agent Ross. Although all the damage to his face is from his fall, it was a sad and literal fall from grace that destroyed his face. D'Angelo, the singer of On Shaken, would show up at Rockstar at midnight to play Red Dead Redemption 2 before he was even part of the game with a song. Sometime after 2014, but before 2018, D'Angelo reached out to the director of music and audio at Rockstar Games via a mutual friend. The reason he reached out is because he was a massive fan of Red Dead Redemption and he just wanted to play Red Dead Redemption 2. He would show up at midnight and play until 4 in the morning. He was eventually convinced to contribute some music. Originally, there was a 6-8 rock track that D'Angelo loved. It might have sounded a little bit like this. But they didn't end up using that. They ended up combining a little bit of it with something a lot different. And what we have is now history. D'Angelo doesn't release a lot of music, so to have him release a song for Red Dead Redemption 2 is pretty darn special. And truly contributed to one of the most amazing moments in gaming history. Red Dead 2 had a cut free roam companion system. Just picture it, you go to your camp, find someone in your gang to bring with you, and then you go cause some shenanigans. It really would have brought a different dimension to the free roam activities. Like if you ran across a stranger mission, would the companion have some comments around it? I don't know. Although companions accompany us through a number of the main missions, it really would have been cool to have that flexibility to take someone and go for a ride with them. It'll be interesting to see what kind of companion system, if any, we'll get in the next GTA game, that's for sure. At one stage of the game, there were baby horses, and you were able to breed horses at your camp. To get the best horses in the game, they would have to reproduce. That would have added a whole other dimension to the game. You would become pretty darn attached to your horse, especially by the end of the game, you know, when that bad thing happens to it. Dutch's horse was originally the best horse in the game that you could only get by breeding. Hey, maybe we'll get something like that in Rockstar's next Western game. Coming no earlier than 2035. Speaking of horses, did you hear about the guy who was dating his horse? He was looking for a stable relationship. Did you know that due to talented modders, you can now drive cars, trucks, motorcycles, X-Wings, and Red Dead Redemption 2? Well, Red M. I've left a link to the Red M server in the description below if that's what you want to do. We all know that Arthur Morgan had a son named Isaac with a waitress named Eliza. He supported them regularly until they were killed in a robbery. But did you know originally Isaac froze to death on the trip to Coulter and Eliza was a gang member? We don't know in that version of Red Dead 2 if Eliza was still Isaac's mother or Arthur's love interest. Here are some different dialogue and voice lines between Arthur Morgan and Eliza as well as a John Marston one. Eliza! Go away! What you doing out here? Gotta get yourself killed. What concern is it of yours? Oh, there are easier ways. Well, if it isn't John Marston. <laughs> Do I know you? Eliza. Cheer up, Eliza. You're like a cloud on a sunny day. Every time I see you, you look at me like I'm the devil himself. We do have some lines from Arthur and Eliza that are pretty personal sounding, as well as some lines from John Marston to Eliza, which indicates she would have been able to leave the gang after Beaver Hollow. It looks like John Marston would have ran into her in St. Denis. Outside of Arthur's mention of Eliza and Isaac with Rains Falls, the only mention of an Eliza in the final version of Red Dead Redemption 2 is a missing poster in the serial killer's basement. It sounded like the developer snuck that in there due to her being downgraded from a character in the gang to just a small mention. I wonder how different the game would have been if Arthur would have started the game by losing his son in that blizzard. What about you? Would you have liked to have this dark version of Red Dead Redemption 2? Drop me a comment and let me know. Hosea was quite ill before his untimely death. We know he crafts some ginseng and that was used to treat lung conditions back in those days. Unlike Arthur who had tuberculosis, it's likely that Hosea had something like lung cancer or COPD. With no treatment available, he self-medicated as well as he could. Well, we'll never truly know what's up. We know he had a chronic condition. 
Not that it really mattered in the end for him, though. R.I.P. Let's jump into some theories. Was Micah a Pinkerton spy from the start? A developer leak indicated that the story kind of starts when you find out someone in your outlaw gang is a Pinkerton spy. Maybe Micah was that rat right from the start. This wouldn't surprise me as the original plans and as the story shifts through development, this was shifted to happen when he came back from Guarma. We know Micah's rode with the Vandalin gang for about six months prior to the Blackwater heist. Maybe his goal was to infiltrate it with some deal with the government for all the bad stuff he did, and he went kind of rogue. It wouldn't surprise me that rat would do anything to save his own skin. Either way, he got the fate he deserved. What was the fate of Jack Marston after he shot Agent Ross in 1914? He soberly looked at his gun and realized he'd become the outlaw he didn't expect to be. Well, he may have the law looking for him if they can tie him to that murder at all. There's a good chance he could have went to World War I, maybe changed his name. There is an Easter egg in GTA 5 of a book called Red Dead by J. Marston. It would make sense for him to become an author canonically. However, he could have also been 74 years old tripping on acid at Woodstock. Well, we'll never really know unless Rockstar gives us some details. Let's hope Jack is happy. There were originally going to be bicycles in the game, mainly in the urban areas. One alleged developer said that they were worse than even the lamest horse, which is silly because in reality, a cyclist has greater endurance than a horse. The only advantage to the horses is they couldn't get injured, but they didn't have any storage space or saddlebags. Either way, it would have been pretty funny to see Arthur Morgan trying to outrun the law on a bicycle. The next one is a weird but unconfirmed one from Red Dead Redemption 1, and it is the ghost of John Marston. Many players have reported that after the events of the last mission, John's ghost is said to create footsteps on the floor, as well as whisper, speak, make noises, footsteps, and even appear in mirrors within the home. Now, there's no video evidence of this, but a number of people on Reddit have said they've heard it. What about you? Have you ever heard of the ghost of John Marston? Guarma changed many times during the development of Red Dead Redemption 2, with the end result being an on-the-rails chapter in Red Dead 2. It felt really tacked on and rushed, like it had no real reason to be there. Well, the original plan for Guarma seemed to be a lot more interesting. You could free roam Guarma, there were stranger missions, there was a little town with a saloon. Roger Clark shared that Guarma originally was going to be a place you could escape from your bounty. Makes sense. There was also like an archaeologist stranger mission where you had to get these artifacts for Dr. Higgins, this dude. One of the coolest things is to go down this path where the road ends, keep following it, and you get to this place that looks like there should be a cave entrance. Well, the reason is there originally was one. If we take a look at this concept art released by a Rockstar artist, I've got the information in the description. We can see a cave and thankfully due to some very talented data miners, we can actually see what the cave would have looked like. It was also called Guama before this big change. It's a shame that Guama got so scaled down and we can't even go there in Red Dead Online. Like a lot of other things, I think the scope just got too big for Red Dead Redemption 2 and they had to scale down a bit. We know there was a second love interest for Arthur Morgan that was scrapped later in development when it was decided it didn't make sense. We know about the tragic romance with Mary that ultimately never works out no matter what you do. We could also take a good guess that somewhere in development, Eliza was a love interest of Arthur. However, it's pretty easy to tell where they landed in the final game. We do have a good indication from various journal entries as well as Roger Clark that Abigail was a second love interest for Arthur. One other possible romance to talk about. Arthur Morgan having the opportunity for a bisexual romance with Charles. Sounds like fan fiction, right? This was from an alleged developer leak on cut content. Would this surprise me in this day and age? Not really. I mean, take a look at Starfield. Take a look at Baldur's Gate. One of the key parts of games is having choice. You could argue it wouldn't fit Arthur Morgan's character, but I hate to tell you, a lot of them cowboys were gay. I ain't making this up. I left some sources in the comments if you're interested in checking that out. The original concept of the game was supposed to start in 1877 when Arthur joined Hosea and Dutch until the gang broke up in 1899. 
then there was the epilogues that would have been a really amazing prologue to the game you know young arthur morgan gets recruited by dutch and hosea that's where you learn the game mechanics this was likely an early concept if true at all it would have been really cool to see younger arthur in the formation of the gang would have meant a whole lot by the end of the game that's for sure hey maybe we'll see this in some kind of sequel or remastered edition who knows if you have made it this far thank you so much for watching this is about five times the average length of most of my videos, so it's a little outside of my comfort zone, so I appreciate you. I hope you found this interesting or informative. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you to my viewers for supporting all my Red Dead content. You are the best. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.